Here again. I know, someone will, people will join. Uh, we are glad to be here. We have a fun American artist to talk about today. Actually, fun is not usually the word uh, that people use to describe him, but our project's going to be fun, so I'm going to use the word fun. So, like I said, it's an American artist, actually considered to be the first significant American modern artist, and his paintings, there are a bunch of examples of his work right behind Lou here. Lou, can you show everybody his paintings? Yeah, yeah. This one's a fairly famous one. Lots of different um, uh, paintings of old houses. I can't see that one. I can move my camera. Yeah, it's kind of there. <laughs> Lots of examples of old houses, but very, very American. Uh, he was born in New York. Uh, a lot of his paintings, though, look more kind of Midwesty, but he did travel around the northeastern states a lot. Um, and then eventually started to get bored and started to travel more extensively. And so we have a lot of these scenes that, uh, to me at least, look very Midwestern. Um, these older houses that are that are separate from other things. Uh, but something he's known for is his great use of light and dark. And that's actually something he learned. Hi! Yep, some people have joined us. Uh, Lou gets very excited watching people have joined us. And, she, and, and Sister Gruner just said, hello, ladies. So say hello back. Uh -huh. Say hello back. Hi. <laughs> Apparently we're shy on camera. Um, so yeah, a little bit of information about our artist before I ask if you can guess who he is. Uh, I said modern American realist painter. He, after school, nope, nope, don't say it yet. After school, he went abroad and he went to Paris uh, to learn more about art and he got really, um, excited about influenced by the Impressionist artists, particularly their use of light, which is something you see in his work for the rest of his light, life, not light, rest of his life, rest of his life. You see the light and the dark here so strongly in his work. And that was um, an influence from the, the French Impressionists when he went over there. After he went abroad a couple of times, he never did again. He stayed in America. <laughs> so, um, can anybody guess who our artist of the day is? Looking at these pictures. Oh, I'll give you one more because this is his most famous painting. You find it. It is called Night Hawks. Any guesses as to our artist's name? Kiddos, can you say it? Hopper. Edward Hopper. When did he get spots on his hat? <laughs> that was you. <laughs> Edward Hopper, born in 1882 and died in 1967, uh, lived most of his life in New York. Like I said, is one of the first modern American painters, con uh, considered a realist painter, although there's a lot of imagination and feeling and personality in his, in his work as well. I love, I've, I've always loved this quote. I didn't realize it was him until I looked it up today. He, he died at what age? 85. Uh, how old was he when he died? If he was born in 1882 and died in 1967, how old was he, how old was he when he died? What did you say was the answer? 85. He actually died before his birthday, so he was... 84. 84. Oh, what happened to his eyes? <laughs> All right, but I started to say, hold on, I love this quote. I didn't realize it was him until today. If you could say it in words, there would be no reason to paint. Love that. Why Why do we paint instead of just talking about it or writing about it? And he said, you know, you can't really always say it in words, so you paint instead. His paintings reflect modern American life, um, rural and urban, but there's always a bit of kind of loneliness or eeriness or quiet. Uh, to his paintings. Oh, there it goes. All right, Lou, come take a seat. Girls, we're done. Let's stop being distracting for a second. Okay, come on. Okay. Like I said, there's kind of a loneliness to his work that I think all of us can kind of relate to. In fact, I saw a meme going around on Facebook the other day that was talking about the fact that we're kind of all in an Edward Hopper painting, painting now because in his paintings, it's often one figure sitting alone 
or if there are a couple of people in it, they're usually kind of far apart, like, like in this one. So he was practicing social distancing. We can all relate a little bit to his pictures right now. Yep. Yep. Those ones right there. Um, there's a quiet and a stillness to him. Again, with this one, with this older gentleman, just sitting there quietly looking around. Um, and it kind of reflected some of his personality. He, uh, it also said that he started to get really, he would jump between different projects because he would get bored. And so to ease his boredom with the same subjects he'd been painting again and again, he traveled around the U.S. Can we relate to that too? Any of us getting a little bored and wishing we could travel around a little bit? <laughs> but while we're at home, we can kind of travel through art by looking at these different pictures and imagining ourselves there and, and painting them um, instead of going to those places right now. So again, this is a great example, one of his most popular pieces that shows a stillness and a quiet and kind of a loneliness um, without, without any people there. Show you a couple more of his works. I mentioned before that one of the things he's known for is his great use of light and shadow. Like we see here, the light and the shadow. Some of his paintings done at night, that light and that dark, super stark, that difference between them. And even when it's the middle of the day, it's on very, very sunny days where you see that shadow, the difference between the light and the shadow so strongly. It's really, really cool. Um, it helps it give it a 3D look. And sometimes, remember I said uh, he did both rural and urban scenes. Sometimes it's a lonely house on a hill, and sometimes it's really, really close up. <laughs> Sorry, phone ringing off screen. Uh, but we still see the light, right? The light over here with the shadow reflecting there. And again, social distancing. Just one lady standing on her porch looking around. He knew what he was talking about. In the city. Um, where you'd expect the streets to be really, really busy. But we just see the one woman at work. But look at that, that light into the dark, how the shadow is going across the street. Really, really dynamic and exciting. If the shadow was really light and all of the colors were kind of the same amount of darkness or lightness, the picture would be more boring. Um, but because it's really stark, the difference between light and dark, it adds interest and makes us more engaged in looking at the picture. We, we see those shadows really stark. It helps give a 3D look to it. But again, we just got a, a, a lady looking around, um, kind of lonely. So I felt like this was a perfect artist uh, for what we're all going through right now. Uh, giving us that feeling of, um, we're all in this together, even though we're alone, um, but it's a similar experience that we're having uh, as we, social distance a little bit. <laughs> okay, stay right there. So our project of the day, well, actually, before I move on to the project, anyone have any questions about Edward Hopper? No. No? Lou doesn't have any questions? What about you? No? What about you, sir? Actually, why does he... Due to his off screen, he did not want to be on camera today. Why? Maybe it's because his hair is very poofy. No? That's not why? why? All right. Why do... <laughs> People alone. Why do you think he draws people alone? You're not sure? Why do you guys think he drew people alone? Because he was alone? Maybe, yeah, maybe it was reflecting a kind of a feeling of loneliness that he had. The feeling that he had sometimes, even though he was in the big city. Lou, I really need you to sit on your chair, please. It makes it really difficult for me to show things. Um, again, wanted to, to show that, uh, I lost my bookmark, that probably is most famous painting that many of you have, have seen before, I'm sure. But look at the difference, how, how bright the light is next to the dark, dark, dark. So for our project, we are going to paint a house. And if you don't have paints, that's okay. You can still draw it and you can, you can uh, add the shadows in with um, shading with your pencil. But when you go to draw a house, we saw that some of his houses were just a lone house on a hill and some were super up close. And so one of the decisions you have to make when you do any picture 
is, and, and you're looking at something is how much you're going to include. Like if you're looking out your window and say you can see five neighbors' houses, are you gonna paint all five of them? Or are you just gonna paint one? And if you're just gonna paint the one, are you gonna paint the entire house or just one side of the house? And one thing artists sometimes do to try and decide that is if you happen to have some cardboard and you can cut out two L's, mm -hmm, is they'll look something like pretend you were drawing me. You could be like, oh, you could draw my head like this or you could put it off to the side or you could go in and make it where it's, you just see my head or you could go in and just see my eyes and nose. Jilt it, makes it a little different, doesn't it? Could keep going, keep going in. And now you just have a picture of, I don't know, what can you see there, my eye? <laughs> so this allows you to expand or make your picture smaller. I know. <laughs> if you do not have cardboard, that's okay because you have two hands. I see artists doing this all the time, and I often do this. When I'm looking at something, I'll be like, okay, well, it looks like this, or I could do that, make, expand it, and I'll look around and see which angle I like it best from. It obviously is slightly easier with this, but can totally do it with your hands. Does Anna do that in Frozen 2? I didn't remember that. <laughs> Additionally, you could get a piece of cardboard and cut a square or a rectangle out of it and use it as a viewfinder, just like when you're looking through a camera or your phone to take a picture. You see the little square you're going to take the picture of. And as you bring it out, you're going to see more. And as you bring it in, Lucy, please stop. You're going to see a little bit less. So you can decide how much you're going to include in your picture by doing that. So you could, you could cut that out of cardboard or use your hands, like we said over here. Use my hands to see how much of Sleeping Grace I want to include in my picture. All right, the next thing that we need to think about in our picture is the light and the dark. So, and, and do we want to do the outside of a building, of a house, or the inside? We're all inside, so that would be easy. Or you can go sit at your window and look outside at a house, or you can do what my daughter Mary did and build a house. <laughs> Isn't this awesome? She built this all out of cardboard and rocks and various things it's she found around the house. house. It's a fairy house. So we could now paint Mary's fairy house. Please don't. But something we really want to do is to get some strong light. Can you tilt it down just a little bit? And so with strong light, we'd be able to see shadow. We'd be able to see which side is in shadow. And look, depending on where we put the light, look at how it moves the shadow of the house and the things around the house. Where, the, your, where your light source is changes the direction the shadow's gonna go in. Isn't that cool? Look at that. Now, outside our window right now, there's not very strong light and shadow because it's a cloudy, cloudy day. Maybe where you live, it's not quite so cloudy. You can see it a little bit better or you can use a light like we're using here to show that. Same thing even with an inside house, uh, inside your house. Look how this side's not getting any light so it's darker, whereas inside is. And what happens, if I can show this. Oh yeah, look at the light showing from the window. You see that light on that side there? I don't know how well this is coming across on camera. I'm sorry if it's not, but I think you guys get the idea, right? You can see the light coming through the window. That's okay, they don't need to be able to see my head. All right, so that's the idea of what we're doing using viewfinders or our hands to decide how much we're including in our picture. We're gonna draw our, our picture of our house, outside or inside, and then paint it. Trying to do dark darks and light lights. So, okay. so grab your pencil. I had a ruler here somewhere. You can get out a ruler to make straight lines if you would like. I'm going to just be doing Mary's house here, our fairy house that we that we have. So I want to see the front of it with the door. Trying to decide which angle I like the, the light to, and dark to be at. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and draw it. I'm going to draw one lonely house on a hill. I like that, that image. I'm not going to worry about my eraser. And girls, you go ahead and do it at the same time. They don't want to just see me doing art. 
Here you go. Mm -hmm. oh, I've decided that I'm going to include. Oh, okay. Decided I'm going to include the entire house. Something like that. Okay, you can turn the lights on. And draw your lines. This is a nice simple house. If I were drawing the neighbor's house, it would be a lot more complicated. So we're gonna stick with simple. Actually, more of there. There we go. Got the basics of the house here. Do you need a pencil, Grace? Okay, you can ask for a pencil. Here you go, sweetheart. I know why so. Got a door over here. Got some rocks. What's in the way so? Don't worry about it. Got a stone pathway. Some of the details. We're going to add that there. Then where are my shadows? My shadow right now. Mm. Yeah, more like that. My shadow is coming here, right on front. Really light here, dark side here. This side of the roof is light. This side of the roof is dark. All right. So there's my simple drawing of my house. And we get to paint. So I had mentioned that we're going to do watercolors today. You use whatever materials you have at home. Like I said, you can use colored pencils or even crayons just fine with this. But for those that are just joining us, okay, um, can you help for a sec? Those that are just joining us, we're doing artist Edward Hopper and we're painting a house today. Um, you can add people to your house or a person, but we're focusing on how much we're including. Are we making it? I love that house. I love that bendy house. Anyway, uh, how much we're including. Are we including the whole thing or a little bit less? And then doing the light and the dark, making sure we get the shadows. We're going to use some watercolor paints. And I have some of these just simple sets that my kids used at school. I will say something. Paint is unfortunately one of those things that you get what you pay for. And the cheaper the paint, the more frustrated the artist. <laughs> and I totally get it. I mean, I send my kids to school with these, you know, these two. Um, but so often when I go to teach in the schools and the kids get these out, they're so frustrated because they can't get their paint, to, their paintings to have much color in them because these are just such, such weak paints. Um, so for your next birthday or Easter or whatever, ask Ask if you can get slightly nicer watercolor paints and you'll be just amazed at the difference. I mean, even spending $10, $15 on a set of watercolors will make a huge difference as opposed to a $1 set of watercolors. Yes. Uh, my friend at school, she has like a, a big drawing water set. Awesome. She has three like things. Can and you grab me the tubes over there? Uh, the best thing to do would to be um, to buy a set that has, you know, these little tubes, and then you squirt them out into a palette, let them dry, um, and then you can begin to paint with them. If they have dried, then you're not gonna be wasting quite as much of them. If you use them when they're wet, you're gonna use so much more paint than you need. And Winsor Newton is a fantastic brand, and I got a set of these at Michael's for half off, and only spent like $20 or something, and they're just so much better. Um, so if you have the chance to do that, that's great. If not, we can still have fun with these. Um, but yeah, I just squirted these out into a palette that uh, my kids calligraphy all over. <laughs> the black ink doesn't come out. So, all right. With our stuff, when, once you've squirted those in, or if you're using these, something to remember with watercolors is they're watercolors. They need water. Um, so you got to have water on your brush and then you got to activate the paints. Why can't I open this? Because I'm trying to open the wrong side. So you need to activate the paints by putting water in there and kind of moving it around. If you just try and grab paint and paint right there, you're not, you don't have any paint on there. You have to 
activate it by moving the water around. And now, now you can see there's paint on my brush and it's ready to go. So make sure and use lots of water. Also with watercolors, traditionally, you don't need white. If you, for those areas that are a lot whiter, you're going to leave the white of the page there for your white. And you don't need to add white to your paints to make them lighter. You just use more water and less paint to make them a lot, a lot lighter. So my house that I was painting was purple. Most of Edward Hopper's paintings are of white houses, but that's okay. I like purple. So remember the one side of the house was light because the light was shining on it. So I'm gonna add lots of water to my paint to make it really nice and bright. Just has a little bit of the color, just a hint of it, so that we know what color the house was. But when, when the light, when the sun is shining really hard, while you still know what color it is, it's so bright and that sun reflects off of it. We need to turn that off. I need to turn that light off now. And then the other side that was in shadow, I'm gonna use a lot more paint to a lot less water and get that color nice and full and rich, saturated, really strong color. Meaning just a really strong color that hasn't been watered down. What? What's funny about that? Nothing. <laughs> okay. We weren't making faces. Oh, you weren't making faces at each other off screen? So you can see the difference between the side that I watered down so much. I haven't even used a different color. I have only used that my light purple color. And yet I'm not gonna, I'm leaving a little white line between the sides as you can see because they're both still wet. And if the two sides touch each other while wet, my dark, dark color is going to leak over into my light color. And I don't want that because I want that to be light, light, light and this to be dark, dark, dark. I can. You don't have to do a house like this. You can add a person and stuff. You can go ahead and add some blue. Most shadows, we think of shadows as being black, but most shadow, the shadows really are blue. They're reflecting the blue from the sky. Um, and when you add black to a painting like, like, like this, it's gonna give it kind of a deadish feeling. Whereas you add blue, the shadows kind of pop a little. So I can go ahead and add some blue to this side to make this even, even darker, even more shadowy. Maybe especially along the edges. But for sure on the ground where I'm adding my shadow. And if you don't want your shadow to be quite quite so bright, then use the opposite or um, complementary color to your blue. What's the complementary color to blue on a color wheel? Okay. No, the one directly across it on a color wheel. Okay. Orange. So if you add a complement to its color, a little bit of orange to my blue, it's going to dull it. It's gonna make it not quite so bright. And just mix that around. And then it's not quite such a brilliant, brilliant blue. It doesn't quite I look like there's a lake in the yard. Back. Please. Please. That shadow is going to be on my rocks too, isn't it? Grass there. So then my roof, uh, our fairy house's roof is green. I think I'm actually going to go for kind of a brown roof. Great thing about being an artist is you get to change things that don't work quite how you want them to. You don't have to paint them exactly like they are. You have, uh, hold on, just a second. You have the opportunity to change it to make it work best for you. So this side of the roof is nice and light too, right? Whereas this side, I'm gonna use that strong color. Really get that in there. Notice I'm not dipping my paintbrush in the water as much. I'm just, I'm using a lot, a lot more paint. And I'll go ahead and add some blue to that too. Okay. 
really make it look shadowy. At the top. All right, what color should our door be? If you had a purple house, what color would your door be? Blue. Blue? We want a blue, a blue door? Though yeah, no. Yellowish. All right, I'll use yellowish somewhere else. Because bluish, yellowish would actually be what color? Purple. Green. We're going to work on our color mixing. <laughs> uh, though, while the door is blue, uh, per our suggestion, remember, this is the side of the house that is in strong light. So it's a very, very washed out blue because the sun is hitting this side of our house. Very washed out. How about our window frame here? Let's get a dark, nice dark color for our window frame. My purple's pretty dry, so it's okay. If I had tried to do this before it was dry, what would have happened? It would have just mixed, right? Mixed where I wouldn't want it to mix. I'm gonna go ahead and add the window pane. Should it be dark or light inside the house? Light. Light? Cool. Make it nice and light. All right, then I'm going to want to get a bigger brush to fill in my green grass because that's a lot of space to fill in. Going to get a lot of water, move it around. One thing you can do that helps things move, uh, helps fill a space really evenly is actually to do a technique called wet into wet. And by that, it means you get your paper wet. So you have wet paper and then a really wet brush, a lot of wet paint. So wet brush on wet paper, wet onto wet or wet into wet, and see how the watercolor immediately starts to spread. And I can help it out a little bit. You don't have to help it out much though. Um, and it makes it dry a lot more evenly than when you start with the dry paper. And spread that out. Over here though, remember is in the sun, so my grass is gonna be kind of light. I'm gonna go back. Um, normally before I did the shadow, I would have painted that green and then put the shadow on top of the green, but I was talking about shadow, so I did it kind of out of order. Go ahead and add green over here where it's super light. So it's really watered down, really washed out. Some green between my rocky pathway because they haven't weeded in a while. We were getting a lot of weeding done last week when it was nice, but it is not, we need to plant. yeah, we want to plant our garden. One of these days we'll get to that. So going ahead back here behind my house. And some green grass. I'm gonna go ahead and add that green right onto where I did the blue. Because obviously underneath, underneath that is blue, is green grass. And the shadow, we would see a little bit of shadow from the back of here. And I want to show you something. This is still really wet. So if when I go to add the blue on top, what's going to happen? Is it going to give me a nice crisp line? Or is it going to spread and move places that I maybe don't want it to move? If that happens to you, don't panic. It's not a disaster. Grab a paper towel or... A dipper. <laughs> paper towels are great to use while painting, but you know, paper towels are kind of valuable these days. Uh, these old fashioned diapers I actually use in my studio because they're super absorbent as they needed to be as diapers. Um, and they work really great to wipe my brush off on. So there we go. If it's super dry, you'll get nice sharp lines. If it's not dry, see there, it's starting to fan out a little bit. And it would depend on your light source. If your light source is really close or really strong, you're gonna have really sharp shadows, like this line right here, like this line right here. If it's a little bit fuzzier, you got some clouds going on, it's gonna be gonna be more of a this kind of shadow line. And so that's okay. I would go back and add my sky yeah. to finish it off. Yeah. But there you go, there's basically my Edward Hopper painting. Now this, this light side is kind of getting lost. It's looking about the same darkness as this. And so we can't see how cool and dark it is. 
So I'm going to go back and I'm going to add a little bit more green to make that darker, to make it stand out against my light, light purple house. Additionally, when I add my sky, that's going to help. So let me go ahead and do that real quick before we sign off. I'm going to get it wet first, wet into wet painting. On the other hand, they're also dry onto dry painting. And that's what you would do when you want to get like scraggly tree branches and stuff. Um, but it's not going to spread out nicely. So going to go ahead and add that. I want my bright blue sky to be really bright and blue to, to so that we get more of that idea of this bright, bright, sunny day we're painting here. Maybe if we paint bright, sunny days, then it will become a bright, sunny day. Do you think it works like that, Grace? Can't hurt to it try, right? If, it works if it's snowing. You paint snowing and it starts to snow? Yeah, because then it works now. If you do all the stuff like wear your pajamas inside out, sleep on your bed, put the other way, put uh, plus five ice cubes on the toilet, put, put as much white crayons and white crayons in the freezer. <laughs> yeah, we have lots, of, they had lots of theories about how to make it snow. It I don't know. Do your kids, garden. do your kids put white crayons in the freezer in hopes that it will snow too? None of it really worked this year. We didn't They're get snow until there. last week, which is kind of odd. Uh, but look at how nice this is with this dark contrast, the dark next to the light, next to the dark. It helps make that pop even more. It makes this look even lighter when we have a dark right next to it. So finishing off back here with a nice blue sky because we're dreaming of bright blue skies here in Oregon where it's cloudy and rainy. Making it a little bit harder because um, can't really even go hang out in the backyard much. That's why we're not even in the backyard. Yeah, that's why we're inside doing art projects, dreaming of bright blue sunny skies. <laughs> All right, and I'm leaving that white line. I can go back and cover that white line later, but for now it helps my colors not mix when I don't want them to mix. So there we go. There's our Edward Hopper project. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I don't actually want it to snow right now. That's just these guys still wishing that it had snowed this winter. I'm hoping for sunny skies so that while we're in this isolation quarantine thing that we can at least play in our backyard. Um, how to make it snow. Okay, we've already talked about that. Yep, and so Lucy, Lucy's been doing hers over here, doing a fantastic job of painting her house. And Grace, just a second, Lou. We, we don't need to talk about putting ice cubes in down the toilet and stuff. Grace is working on hers. I love the flowers and stuff she's got going on here. Fun little details to add. Uh, you, and again, remember I said you can add people in there. Just remember the shadows that people will make. If a person's standing up, where's the shadow going to be? depending on where their light source is, but it's going to be on the ground right behind them. Uh, none of those show good examples of people in their shadows, but that's okay. All right. Thank you guys for joining us. If you have any questions, please uh, type them in the comments. I'll, I'll keep looking even after we close this down. Um, hope you enjoyed it. And <laughs> your friend Nora said hi. She said, I love you, Lucy. Say hi back. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> Hope you guys are doing okay, staying healthy and well, and hope you have fun. Happy arting.